The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, Thursday, the 6th of uh, July. We're looking at the Dow down 406 to 33,881. Been warning subscribers for at least uh, a week now that I think that we're coming into some kind of selling pressure and that on a very short term basis, the daily charts are probably going to make this dreaded H pattern. But those nine pre moving averages and all the indices are still strongly above the 14 is going to take another big session down to at least get this nine period in the daily. Look at this Dow daily. The green nine is way above the 40. But when they both uh, change trajectory where there isn't a divergence, but they both sharply down, there's a really good chance that at some point, see where it saved the day right here, very ugly candle, and then all of a sudden, the nine period moving average stays above the 14. And I said, be careful, because that should turn into an M-shaped pattern. That M-shaped pattern will be a test, because if the vertical lines show a discrepancy, look at this, the Dow at 34,588 on the 16th of June, Nice strong leg D. What's the objective of the Chapman wave to get to at least a, a PD in a buy mode? We can go higher, but at least to get to a D. And what do we have? We have the MACD strong, the moving average convergence divergence. We have the nine way over the 14 period moving average. We have the uh, stochastic way up in the 86, almost 90 percent area. You've got the double top in the on balance volume. And then what happens when you retest? I think it was just a fractional miss. Let me just go through that again. I should have typed it in. I forgot to. I typed it in the daily chart. Let me see what I've got here in the daily chart that I send to subscribers every day. Uh, yeah, three, four. Okay, so that's a good example of what we're looking at. I just let me see what the uh, short-term trade. Oh, short-term trading index is way up in the two. Uh, what is it? Two. 270 area, and that suggests that there should be E mini strength coming in, even if it's from lower down. So be prepared that at any point you can get some bursts of, of upside energy. But the trend, the tide, I believe, at least in the short term, is trending down. So let's just go back to what we were talking about here. So we've got the high that was made on the uh, 30th of uh, June at 34,467.39, and the next day it's four. It's 465.66. So, yes, you started that peak B right there. Great peak B. You remember, I said the technicals are not strong enough to call this a buy mode. That should go to a D. <clears throat> but what we are looking at is that we're looking at a sharp move down. And I always say there are two fighting patterns, cups and arches. The cup pattern, look what happened. The MACD was good, but not anywhere as good as it was on the 16th of June. The stochastic was way weaker. The unbalanced volume was way down here. It was only the nine period moving average that was really positive. So when I said to subscribers, I don't want to short these key indices. What is the very best indice that I can look at at this particular moment is this, the weakness in the SMHs. So we are short, three times short a, a position in the uh, SOXS. And the reason being, look at this. Look how strong, and I showed this on air the other day. <clears throat> On the 60th, I believe it was, the uh, semiconductor, Van Eggs semiconductor ETF goes to 155.94. Oh, I remember I had this typed and then I had to, I had to shut down because I had a problem. And I'll make that red. And then it went to a, a rebound. And look at this, look how weak on the 3rd of July, 154.07, not very much lower, but look how weak, 154.07. Look how weak the um, MACD already, it tried to deflect higher. It couldn't even get close to being positive. And look at the stochastic way down here at the 52% area, but that nine period moving average is still positive. So what it's telling me are three things. 
Number one is, I'd say that it will take time. It's a whole process before it can actually flip to negative. If it's going to, and we still don't know if it's going to flip negative. At any point, you can get something that happens. I don't think it's going to happen, but you could get something that says, hey, watch out. I'm having another rally to the upside. And the thing that says to me, just keep it as a possibility, even though it's just at this point, it's very, it would be unusual to do that, is Apple. No, I've spent, I don't know how much time, I've spent trying to count the channel wave notation in Apple. And each time I keep coming out, to a C, everything about this looks like it should be an alternate account, a G-C, that this is for Apple some kind of at least a short-term daily chart. Not the weekly, weekly is still looking great, but that daily has all the characteristics. So I don't know whether I've miscounted, I, I've gone through it a couple of times. I know I've got a chance of an alternate count, but I don't like to make it convolution. It either is or it isn't. But when you're looking at thousands and thousands of charts <clears throat> to have a rare peak C failure, um, in a, in going to all-time highs or recovery highs, that is so rare, but it can happen. So I'm just saying <clears throat> everything about Apple at this particular point is holding beautifully. The MACD only now <clears throat> has started to turn down a little bit. Uh, stochastics at 83, still positive. Um, on balance volume turned down, but still pretty good. Nine is way above the 40. So yes, Apple could give you one quick spike to the upside above the 194s, to maybe make that leg D, but I'm not resting everything on just an apple. I'm saying that because of the way the semiconductors have been acting, look at this, NVIDIA has the same pattern. It made a peak F at 420, uh, no, 439.90. I may as well put that in 439.90. I think that was also the same day, 439.90. Um, and if you look at the vertical test, look at this, how strong it was right there. It actually wasn't as strong as it was just earlier than that, but it was pretty darn strong. And then when it retested just even yesterday, uh, going to the 430, uh, 31.77 high, look how weak the MACD is. Look how weak the stochastic is. Look how weak the on balance volume is. But that nine period moving average is still holding well, and that's why it's taking time. But I'd said, and I was wrong, that I suspected in the, first, the end of June to the first week of July, we would start to see a test going towards the gap down. That gap down from the gap high was, uh, this is the gap up, I'm sorry, it's called the, 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 the low of the bar, 366.35. Well, that is clearly wrong. It's showing tremendous strength. And I remember, I like to pair it because I get questions about this all the time. In fact, I wonder if I've got one right now. Let's just see. Um, ah, turn the hype machine up. It's all about interest rates. Yeah, 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 Paul. I'm, I'm the hype hyper, I, for sure. <laughs> what a joke. All right. So there we go. Um, the strength at the 439.90 area and there's weakness here. And that just says there should be some kind of a pullback. But the chart itself, <clears throat> this is a high level consolidation. It, it just, it's like the Apple chart at this particular moment. The price itself is holding fantastically. I like to pair it since Paul is uh, there with GE. So GE had an alternate count that was G slash C. And now that it becomes a, C, uh, a D at this point. I'll tigers and tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I just wanted to cl clarify, look, um, when you're talking about NVIDIA, that's one type of um, trader that's in, or trader, or, or maybe even a long-term buy and hold person, it's just a different mentality. If you look, does it matter to you if you have a stock um, that you buy at 150 and it goes, in this case, to 400? Or if you've got a stock that goes from 60 and it goes to 110 or 107, when one is with a PE that's out of sight, it's changed a little bit because of the projections, but I don't believe the projections. That's uh, NVIDIA. And the other is a GE that's just been hammered for decades and decades and decades, and now has finally got things right. There's a different mentality. This is a value stock in a different way completely. You can even call NVIDIA, in a sense, a value stock because it's part of the entire economy, just as GE is part of the cyclical and, and heavy-duty equipment-type economy. So NVIDIA is the is the is the spark. It's the engine. You, without the chips, you you know you haven't got anything. So I don't look at it that way. I don't look at it as if <clears throat> it's a selling. And besides which, the only selling point is that I like GE a lot as something that for subscribers I would have liked to have owned. We spoke about it the two days before the split when it was GE Healthcare. I just didn't do it. I didn't feel didn't feel like I wanted the complication of having a, one position that gets split and you got to figure it all out. That was dumb. I mean, it was such an easy thing to do, and it's just gone straight up since GEHC, the GE Healthcare, has pulled back very sharply, very sharply. But it has spectacular move from the 50 area to uh, the high 80s. And now it's dropped to the 76 and it's trading it at, at 80 right now. It's still holding very well, but I think it's not quite ready for an entry point. Anyway, so I just wanted to say, don't get don't get excited about one that has a valuation. Of, if the price is moving up, your only objective is to make money in the, in the stock market. Isn't that the point? I mean, what what is it, else is the point? Is to use it to be able to make money, build a portfolio, build up a kidney. That's what I'm trying to do for subscribers. We take little bits of profit all the time. Because we're trying to build a nice kitty, even if it's not saying saying to subscribers, okay, this is great. Now it's triple because those triples, in fact, would have for us could have been unbelievable to the upside when you got over 100 and 150 points, 150 percent gains. 
But wow, if you make a mistake, that's just terrible. So it's, uh, you know, steady and smooth is the way to be. So in the way, when I'm looking at it right now, I'm just looking at the charts and I'm saying, okay, so those are working. Then a couple of questions came in. Let me just get to them right now because I want you to, I, I, no, I first have to do the TLT. You see the TLT, I spoke about the, you know, the Chapman wave, we've got a, a, a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. And the whole thing about it is the 98 level is going to be imperative to hold. Uh, so far, we've slid today to 99.84 in the daily chart. You've got a left side, right side arch formation to that long-legged doji candle right there. We went to the exact day with uh, inside wedge target support line being tested. Um, if you look at the exact opposite of the T and X, and I need to talk about this because this is part of I, I don't disagree. The interest rates are absolutely imperative to monitor here. So as far as selling anything, no, we're just doing an analysis as, as best we can. That's the objective here is to try to do that. Um, I do not uh, ha if I have to hype that at all. Uh, we, we've got our own positions. We've done very nicely with our positions. So no, that's not the case. So what did I do there? I was going to type in. What was I going to type in? Um, oh, question came in. So the first question was the KRE. So I was looking at the TLT. This is all part of the KRE. This is the financials. This is the regional uh, ETF. If the interest rates are going to go much higher, my suspicion is that the regionals will be hurt perhaps even more than the, than the big money center banks because they've got a lot of other things going as well. So let's just look at this. The KRE, which we were long, and I said, no, we're going to take out money and we're profit and we, we're out of this because... I don't like the action at all that was after that peak D, uh, s and Regional Banking ETF. It had 78.81 January high 2022. Takes a little tumble down to the 34s. Has a nice left side, right side. Look at this beautiful symmetry of the left side to the 33.48 low about August of uh, 2020. Uh, and now what have we done? We've come back to the 34 level, just a fraction above that and trying to establish a low. But look at the, the nine period moving average pink underneath the 14 in the weekly chart. Um, this H pattern is going to be imperative to, to monitor because if there's a close under the week of uh, the uh, 2nd of June, low of 38.45, wow. Then that 34.52 low of the 5th of May, 34.54, I believe I said 34. Point. 54. That becomes your next target. So what I would prefer to see, it's not listening to me, I'm just saying what I would prefer to see, because look, he has this pattern called the dreaded H. I better show this because we always have new viewers. Uh, this is the chart pattern I want to look at here. Oh, why did that move out? Uh-oh. No. Did I lose that? No way. What happened? Uh, let me just check. I don't want to Oh, oh, no, there it is. Whew, it was being hidden. I was going to say that would be, I've got it, but it would be a shame because I want to talk about it right now. There's a pattern that I call the dreaded edge. There are three patterns I'm looking at all the time. Straight line up, there's a straight line up. A pullback, straight line down, there's a straight line down. And cup formation and arch formation. So straight line, arch formation, one and three. If it takes out off your peak A or a B and it takes out the left side low, watch out, it can go a lot lower. Well, here it is. That can't be an A because the bar that makes the high cannot be an A except for it cannot have a letter to it uh, and, unless it's uh, an instant restart. So that's your A right there. And that A fails. Kaboom. And it creates this pattern that I'm talking about, the lowercase h. See, here it is. Right here, after that peak, okay, I'll make it a bit bigger so you can see it. It fails, right? There's your one H. And then there's another H forming right now at leg B. Remember A or B on the upside when you fail and you take out the left side low? You have to be really careful. Jambalaya, what I'm going to say to you is this. If you're looking for... A buy, and I, I usually make these gray because there are no, it's not a buy mode at all, or even a buy signal. If I would be holding off, I'd much prefer to start buying on strength than weakness in anything to do with the financials. Because look, even the XLF, whoops, type it in over here. Even the XLF, which is the S&P, 
financial ETF, XLF, um, had a much better chart, had the 200 period moving average as resistance at a peak F. And the, the other thing that I must do right now is I sometimes put in a down arrow before the nine period moving average has actually turned negative. I couldn't tell you how many times I've had to go back and change it to the next peak. And this is the one that could turn into the down arrow. Why? Um, because the nine period moving average is still strong in the XLF. But look at the KRE. Oops, look at the KRE. As we go to the break, I, prom I should promise my engineer. I won't pull through the break. We're going to wrap it up right now before we come back. Dow's on 443. Look how negative the nine period moving average is in the KRE in the daily chart. I'd wait. I think 38 is the area that I'd start looking at to see what happens next. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I will get back to the scene mini in a moment. I just want to finish this, some of the questions that came in that I need to do. So what we're looking at for KRE, the 3939 left side low <clears throat> of mid-June, that's going to be key. If there is a decisive close, I don't mean just a close of 3930. 10 or 39. If there's a close like 38.75, be careful because you could very quickly go one to one to the downside. That'll take you to, I'm just doing it by eye. That would take you to a test of 38 uh, very quickly, 37.90. And then the weekly chart, which already looks very weak. Look, the MAGD rallied 
and the price didn't do all that much, 34, uh, so it's just 40 is, is a good percentage gain, but it hasn't held. That's the most important thing. Look, the, the nine period moving average differential in the MACD did rally, and this started to pull back. Stochastic's rallying and not too bad at 45%, but it's still overall in number, 45% is very weak, 48%, sorry. On balance volume is, is weak, and that monthly chart is, wow. It just can't hold gains, and that's not good. Okay, that's enough with the KRE. Next question was gold. Uh, so this is going to be interesting for me because for subscribers, I've been saying in 2023, there's going to be an opportunity for a decent rally in the gold area. It might turn out to be silver a little bit more on a percentage basis than gold. That's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, I, I was very cautious. We didn't do anything going along at all for a while now in the gold area because that night, look at this peak F top in the weekly chart. This is the continuous contract. Look at the way the nine period moving average has turned negative. Look at this uh, MACD big spread. Look, the histogram, that's the distance between these two lines, it's getting bigger and bigger. The stochastic at 18% says it probably has, has to go to um, the single digits before there's, at least in the weekly chart, a decent, strong, not a rally attempt, but I mean, a, a rally that's sustainable to go to 15% and then 22% and then 30%. So I'm just, I'm kind of cautious right here. Uh, we haven't broken down on the left side. This is a pattern that could, could become quite positive, this arch formation, uh, if the technicals hold very well and so forth, they starting to weaken. So all I can say is that I haven't got any signals there and what's, what's upsetting to me is that the GDX is acting a lot worse. And I really like over the years, um, I've always preferred to see the, uh, the market vectors, gold miners ETF rally and have gold kind of follow. The gold lead and the vectors just says, uh, we're not ready for prime time. And that's kind of what we're looking at. Look at the steep decline here today. 90 cents down, 3% down the GDX. So all I can say is that I haven't got a signal yet, and if I do get a signal, it's probably going to have to be this the potpourri, this monopoly, uh, or you've got to look at a whole smorgasbord of many things. Look, you have to look at the euro. I can't just do this in isolation. The euro um, is whole. E U R U S D. I thought I did that correctly. I did. So where did it go? There it is. The euro daily chart has made this peak C and has pulled back. It looks like it should be a D. Now, I was going to give this a, a, an, an alternate count, and I think I will right now. You see this because it travels in these the decimal points, one, two, three, four, five. That drives me nuts. That's why I could never trade this because I, I'd have to look for each peak and I, I, I'd go to, hey, come on. There we go. So is it going to tell me? Well, you see the, these two candles right here? I think I can get it. Oh, something's happening. Click. Hello, anybody there clicking? All right, see that? Normally, I would consider that to be a peak B. Oh, no, don't you? Oh, great. Oh, there it is. Waiting for server data. Great. It moved in a place I've never seen it before. There we go. Okay, here it is. So you've got now, forgive me when I go through these numbers here. It is. 1.07397, and then one, am I going to remember that? And then moving to the right, just a fraction, oh, 1.78, oh, Oh, I guess it's exactly the same. Yeah, so that gives me a legitimate reason. And normally, I should have done this before. This is what I call Chapman Wave Phantom Peak. In other words, I, in my methodology over the years, I've tried to be as strict as possible with all the different variances. And if it doesn't fit, you can't make it up because what's the point of having a having a a movable uh, template? A, a template's a template. And therefore, this has gone D, and within a day or so, we'll get this maybe pink, and the nine period moving average will go under the 14. But I think on price alone, this time I'm legitimately going to go with a down arrow. So, on a daily basis, not a weekly, but a daily basis, the daily chart of the euro is negative in a cell 
mode, the USD JPY. So the question on gold, all of this to me is the way I look at gold, is holding really well. It's made a peak E, but look at this high level consolidation. Look at the weekly chart, and it says the dollar, Japanese yen, looks like it wants to go a little higher. Doesn't tell you how high other techniques do that. And if you look at the dollar, which really has been kind of pathetic, it's come back a little bit to just uh, down six ticks at 103.30. We've been long since 2018, still remain long. I uh, have taken a little bit off. Now, what's really important about this, it's saying to me that gold is not ready. That's all. So the question was, what would I be looking at? I'd be looking at this whole potpourri of things, and I'm just saying to you, I don't see gold as being ready yet. Maybe some of the stocks, let's see, let's just grab, yeah, look, some of the stocks are attempting to form some kind of a, a bit of a base here, but I can just tell you this, that um, I don't get it just yet. I, I don't see it. Maybe the left says ASA, gold and precious, let's look at GOLD, which is the um, barrack gold used to be ABX. Yeah, it's attempting to form some kind of a base. It's a process, it's an ongoing process. So looking at very short-term trades, maybe we'll, in, the, in the next couple of days, we'll see a little bit another a bounce in gold. But I don't get, I just don't yet have the sense that I'm getting a really strong signal in gold. And if you put that together with the BTC, which is Bitcoin, Look how Bitcoin's holding up to the higher end of the range. Not, I'm talking about the, the monthly chart going to 70,000 and plummeting down to the teens, and now at 30,000. Um, but this is a high level consolidation. So I'm trying to put it together with the financials, how the dollar works with the Bitcoin, how Bitcoin's working as a, maybe an alternative to gold. It's had a decent rally as gold's pulled back. So the potpourri that I'm looking at says, hold off. Should have done that right in the beginning. Said so just hold off for now. Um, you can have quick trades. I just don't see the bigger one yet. Uh, next question I had was the VIX index. So here's the VIX. Now this is fascinating. On a day like this, when the Dow is down 400 and wow, 80, 80, yeah, 482, and the S&P is down 58, and the uh, semiconductor ETS SMH is down, and I said that this is to me a clue as to what's happening they go together yeah smh is down over three at 147. um i think you've got to take this at least initially as a daily sell that could have impacted the weekly but you have to go one step at a time vix is up 17 18 percent at 16.72 up 254 i'll be right back Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Gumbalaya, uh, I don't know how many languages you know. It's amazing. You see, I, 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 every time I, I see you in there, you're thanking someone in a different language or speaking different. That's fantastic. So, by a donkey, uh, uh, Kani Kla, thank you very much. Um, that's very nice of you. Um, thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, I am seeing in long term, Tesla will be seeking 162 ish. Okay, let's see. So, oh, first of all, this move and the VIX index, the power of the move, yesterday tootling along in the 14s, and today up uh, 17, 18%, uh, having hit 16.72, right now it's 16.71. Um, that's just saying the speed with which we've got the fear factor involved says to me, based on those weekly charts, that this could be over very quickly. Uh, the reason why... Um, I'm waiting. Uh, the only short we have, as I say, is this uh, SOXS because uh, the SMHs look very weak and they're still very weak. And that's going to be a clue for me because if they uh, start to trade, I'd said under 148.70 uh, would be kind of negative. Well, today at 147.71 right now, it is a, a possible dreaded H. There's that peak B that it could close underneath that left side low of 146.83. Uh, the day is young, anything can happen, but the MACD and Stochastic are suggesting that that nine-period moving average could, even if it's just for one day, could dip negative. And when it does that, that's where all, everything has to be analyzed because the wider the distance between the nine EMA below the 14-period moving average, you can see from the way up, the wider it is on the upside, the stronger the move. And that's what I always say. The final thing in my uh, in my Sears and Roebuck huge toolbox with all these technicals, uh, technical tools is this 9-14 period moving average. And that's the one that can keep you in the trade much longer than you would no normally anticipate. So, the, so this is for the SMHs. Uh, in this particular instance, we're looking at the chance of moving down a little bit more and then we have to reassess or assess no i'd say reassess okay so that's what i'm looking at so tesla is almost in the same category look that gap up with to the peak f 276.99 around about the 16th or so it pulls back underneath the 14 period moving average but that nine is so strong even now look the histogram um on the macd has turned negative it's at 0 0.04. In other words, this MACD is just barely turned negative. Stochastic's still good at 79, just under 80%. But that nine period moving average is holding it beautifully. So in terms of Tesla itself, uh, what did you say, 162-ish? I would say rather than look at 162, which is over 100 points lower, uh, what, a 50, 
40, 42% or greater uh, decline, I would just say, hey, if it, if it has to still fill the gap, that makes this whole area of 240, 240.70 imperative to hold. It's not even close. It's 36 points away from that right now. So I don't look at it this way. If you want to do a long-term analysis, that's fine. But don't it interfere with the shorter term. And that's the reason why I'm saying I'm not ignoring that Apple and Tesla are still showing good strength, um, holding very well in the highs. And even though it's a peak C and it looks to me like it should be a G in Apple, consider that this is $1.30 down 0.67. When the indices are over uh, 1.20 and 1.30 to the downside, holding very nicely. Okay, so I did want to say, uh, to, but Tesla at this particular point, I would just say Tesla is a little bit vulnerable to selling pressure. But wait a minute, look at Ford. Ford's first big pullback, big red candle at an F slash B, down 35 at 14 or 15 right now. Um, look at General Motors. So the automobile companies have held extremely well under these conditions in the shorter term. So you've got to look at things very separately. And my my impression here is it's kind of this this interest rate factor and the financials. That's kind of putting a lot of weight. But look at this, Jet. Let's see with Jet Blue. Is it actually having a pullback today? Jet Blue. Oh, look at that. Peak E, sharp pullback. But look at that big move. So. Think of this as a rotational correction going on right now. Think of it as some of the areas like, uh, I'll use this, this is just an example. We, we are along a position in, in ENVX, which is Enovix Corporation of Silicon, Anode, Lithium, Ion, Battery, Development, Product, Data, Solutions, all that, blah, blah, blah. So we, we're in from down, the, the, what was it, I think just about 16, under 16. And here it is, it spirals up, 16.38. Uh, and then it goes to 19.53, only in one move. And I said, we're just holding off. We've got a price that we want to get into this for the next position, much lower down. Well, it's down 8% today alone, but look at this. Look at the spectacular move. Look at the one, other one we've got, which is um, SYM. Spoken about this very often. Symbolic. We're in, in, in the uh, 21s. It hit 53.83. Here's your dreaded H. So this is what I'm saying, that the stocks that were spectacular are having this rotational correction. They deserve a rotational correction. I would like a rotational correction. We want to add to some of these things. Symbolic end-to-end -end AI, robotic warehouse automation systems. Uh, I, you know, it's in the area that seems to be the good area. Not today and not the last week or so. So be very careful. Look at the IYT. I mentioned it yesterday how nicely the IYT did. So today it's getting a bit of a pullback. Just get that going there. There it is. Look, peak E and now we're getting the pullback. But look at that fabulous move from the 210 area up into the 250s. Now it's at 246. So that's all I'm saying. You can see it's a big impact on, on the numbers and some of the things. Uh, look at uh, applied materials. Applied materials. Made a G slash C. That to me looks like a G top. Looks like an arching over. But that weekly chart is still strong. Look at advanced micro devices. Um, had a spectacular move from uh, the April in the April's in the 70s. And it almost doubles. Goes to the 130 area. Peak F pulls back. I, I'd done the measured move here, and I said, look at this rally going to the high of the round about the 12th. Look at that. The MACD is flattening out. Stochastic's much weaker, but the and the on-balance volume made this M-shaped pattern, which says you, you can pull back. Well, it's pulling back, but the weekly chart is still relatively good. So keep in mind, this is very selective. We had another one that we it took a tiny loss just by a fraction we got stopped out, and then it went on to do exactly what I'd done. I'd drawn this in, left side, right side, price, time match to it, not to the low. Uh, well, in this particular instance, it was the low of the uh, first of uh, June. Uh, this is Train Tech PLC, and this is heating, ventilation, air conditioning, perfect time for that. Um, and it did it exactly. And then it made the Doji candle at D, and now it's just pulling back a little bit. Look at the potential double top, 196.22 from the week of the 10th of March to the most recent guy, 192.72-ish. Um, hey, 
how some of these things are just having a very mild consolidation. I'll be right back. Tigers and Tigresses, get ready for our annual 4th of July Tiger Dollar Sale. From now until July 7th, you can receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when you purchase Tiger Dollars. Tiger Dollars are automatically applied to your account and can be used for all subscriptions and purchases. Don't wait, this sale ends July 7th. Visit TFNN.com today to purchase Tiger Dollars and receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus. As an added bonus, every order comes with a special TFNN mug. Happy 4th, Tigers! TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, we're looking at uh, uh, Joby. This is Joby Aviation Inc. Electric Aircraft AV, uh, AV Toll Technology. I had a spectacular move going from the sixes spirals up to double to about 12 uh, five days ago and now it's consolidating so what i want you to mention here is uh, this is uh, so the question is where would i where would you uh, buy it i i don't think i would buy it right now i would like to see how it holds the 868 uh, to 820 area if it can hold steady there that might be ready for this is the kind of thing in this particular phase right now these 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 stocks, the, the sexy stocks with a name like electric vehicle, etc. That's where you want to get those really quick pops, and then you just have to get out of it or or, or take something off and high, raise your stop. 
and then keep doing it over and over. I'm not sure these are ready for prime time. In other words, buy if you manage to get in the fives, yes, then you could buy and hold. But at this particular point, these these all of them that I'm looking at are starting to take on pretty heavy uh, downside moves, and they they really get, do the Eiffel Tower straight up and straight down pattern. So just be careful. So as we're about to wrap up, you're going to go to Steve Rose. Great programming here for the rest of the day, of course. Uh, I'm just going to say it's still a little early uh, to be thinking of where would we do buying. I think we need at least another couple of days. They don't have to be as severe as today, wherever it closes. And also, when the trend turns like this, try to stay with the trend. Because if you go counter trend, um, it kind of gets costly if you're wrong. So, and also take profits quickly on the 